Hi, everybody. It's Josie Wilson here. And Stephanie, do you want to unmute and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm manager of technology services. And I am the manager of collections and resource sharing. Um, we are here today to do a little webinar for you on our year end processes. So we're going to tell you about um, reports and important dates and talk a little bit about rollover um, that happens in collections and resource sharing. So just a few housekeeping things before we get started. Um, I'm probably going to turn my camera off for while I'm talking, and then we'll turn it back on at the end um, when we're or when we're doing um, questions and things like that. Um, throughout the presentation, you can feel free to put your questions in chat. Uh, this is being recorded uh, because there are folks who can't attend today who will want to see it after and. Uh, is there something else? If you want to talk and uh, would like one of us to unmute you instead of chatting your question, um, just ask Stephanie or I in the chat and we can unmute you so that you can ask a question. Um, I think that's it. I might miss your question for a slide. I'll try to kind of check back and forth a little bit. Um, but if I miss it, don't worry, I will get to it before the end, because I don't think this will take us the whole hour um, to go through. So we should have lots of time for questions. And we've got quite a few people here now, um, lots of people from our member libraries. Welcome, Lisa and Taryn and Carla, Darlene, Melissa, Lisa. And then we've got some folks from YRL, like Jennifer, Laura. Uh, Scott and Janet. So this is great, great group today. So here we go, let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is, um, or by the end of today, what we hope you will achieve is that you'll understand our year-end timelines. Um, you'll be able to complete orders before your, the year-end cutoff. So we're wanting to give you lots of time so that you have time to do that and identify which reports YRL will send to you in December and January. So we'll talk about that in um, both contexts of collection and resource sharing today and technology services. But we're going to start with collections and resource sharing. So this year is a little bit different um, than previous years. Last year, we had, of course, the beginning of the pandemic, and we didn't quite know what that would bring us with end of year and, and what would happen at the end of the year. Um, but this year brings a few different things. So this year, we have um, some supplier delays that are cropping up in our environment for collections and resource sharing. You may have seen in our newsletter, I think a couple of weeks ago, we shared some information from our main supplier, United Library Services, a letter that they sent to us, or maybe I shared it in an email, I can't remember how I shared it, um, about supplier delays. And there's been quite a bit of media coverage lately about supply, supply uh, chain delays in shipping, as well as in the publishing industry. So what does this mean for year end? And what could it impact in our year end services for 20 21. Um, I am predicting that we're going to see more titles rolling over as on order or back ordered. We've already seen in the last couple of years that we do have a higher number of back ordered titles and some of your libraries actually have already been contacted by me over the last few weeks about what to do with some of these long back ordered titles as I'm calling them. So things that may have been on back order um, from the beginning of 2020, we've, we, we've started looking at that and saying, okay, what do we wanna do with, with those things? So we predict that um, you might be rolling over a bit more on order um, type titles from 2021 into 2022. Um, what this means is that for your Build Direct account, so if you are a library who uses Build Direct, um, you may want to consider doing some cancellations before year end or at, at just after year end cutoff with ordering. Um, I do have one library who, who does this frequently because for their auditors, they have to 
have everything that they've ordered kind of in and arrived at their library by the end of the year. So they do some cancellations and they also, you know, do their ordering a little differently. So they make sure that they order, you know, by the end of October um, and they don't place many orders unless it's on their allotment in November and December. So if you're a library and you think, oh, that's my situation too. I need all of my bill direct items invoiced by the end of the year then I really encourage you to reach out to me um, and just let me know that you might be in that same situation. Um, and if you are, and you if you, you know, need things invoiced out, you know, just let me know because we'll start, you know, monitoring those accounts and I'll let you know, you know, this is how many you have on order, should we cancel? Doesn't mean we can't reorder in the new year and on the new funds, we can do that too. So, um, if that fits your situation, please contact me. But right now we have, you know, this, this warning, I guess, this preparation for these supplier delays. We haven't really seen anything yet. We haven't seen a decrease in shipments yet, um, but we might. And I'm thinking that they will, you know, roll over into affecting us maybe more in 2022 but there could be some effect um, in November and December. So what is year end in collections and resource sharing? Well, what we do is we wrap up our ordering and then we wrap up our receiving. So i.e. our acquisitions processes. We have to stop our acquisitions in order to do some setting up for 2022 and reconcile all of your funds and accounts to make sure that nothing is um, un, like that nothing has gone wrong um, in 2021 in preparation for our auditors. So we take a look at allotments and we set up your allotments for 2022. We give you new money, which is always exciting. Um, we also send out and prepare standing orders for 2022. So be prepared, keep an eye on your email for some standing orders. And I'll talk about that in another slide more in detail. And then we roll over all of the accounts. So we end off a fiscal year in Polaris and we start a new one. Um, and this includes, you know, spending out e-content contributions. We run lots of reports and we also do a deep dive into all of the funds and order statuses. And um, we have a lot of back and forth with vendors and cleaning up and that kind of thing. So, um, and the last thing that we do is we make sure that all we have accuracy when we're rolling over all these accounts and orders to make sure that you're not losing any funds or any orders. So more detail about how we wrap up an acquisition. So we end the fiscal year of 2021 ASGY. So that comes to an end. Then we halt ordering to reconcile our accounts. I'm just taking a look at questions because I haven't looked, but there are none. So that's good. Um, we halt ordering to reconcile accounts. Now we, and you might say, well, why do you have to do this? Well, we have to do this in order to get accurate reports. Um, and we really encourage you to follow a similar timeline as us for the most accurate information. Um, because we can only, the reports that we run in Polaris are up to um, a certain time. And oh, Carla, I will cover um, halting ordering in just a second. Um, and so if you follow a similar timeline, you'll get the most accuracy um, from the reports that we run for you in Polaris. So we reconcile your additional allotment contributions. We make sure that what you've sent in is what we've added into your accounts and we haven't missed anything. Um, we also reconcile all of the digital content contributions. So this is also kind of considered additional allotment, um, but it just goes to digital content instead of physical content. And then we have to reconcile all of our HQ collections accounts, including um, all of our e-resources account or our digital content accounts for everything, every database and e-resource and everything we've spent on kits. Now, in terms of the standing order setup, I'm just going to do, I didn't do this last year. And so I wanted to just include a little bit of information about standing orders for folks who might be newer or who maybe didn't do standing orders last year. So standing orders are something that we set up at the end of every year in preparation for the upcoming year. There's three options for standing orders. So that's juvenile or teen series and paperbacks, adult paperbacks and reference materials. 
Now, for a more, if you have a lot of questions about these or you'd like to talk about, you know, what you've had on standing order, definitely reach out to us in collections and resource sharing. You can email the orders email, you can email the catalog email, or you can just email Janet or Scott or myself um, individually and we can help you with standing orders. So what, why would you want to do standing orders? Well, if you do not want to actively do collection development in these areas, standing orders are a nice easy option for you. Um, so what that means is that if you don't want to have to be researching new paperbacks that are coming out every month and choosing titles, like in the super forthcoming, then you can just do a standing order saying, I want 10 paperback bestsellers every month, I want two Westerns, and I want three romances, and that will just be sent to you. And we take it off allotment, or we can do Bill Direct for that. For the juvenile and teen series and paperbacks, it's the same thing. So if you're standing there going, I don't have enough time to figure out when the new Geronimo Stilton books are coming out, or, you know, choose all the leveled readers, because I just know that I need, you know, leveled readers in level one, two, three, four. Um, you can put those on standing orders. As the new titles come out, we will send them to you. The other thing to note about these is that we can set them up and end them. Um, we, well, we prefer to set them up in November and December and January um, for the upcoming year, but we can stop them or edit them anytime during the year. And this is a change from what YRL has offered in the past. So we can, you know, if you're running out of money with your adult paperback plans, we can stop them. Um, if you've had a change in something at your library, we can stop things, we can add things in if you want. But if we do add anything in, it won't be retroactive. It'll just be from that point moving forward. So we can always start a new series or a new paperback or a new adult plan for you if you want at any point in the year. But like I said, it won't be retroactive. You won't get everything that came out before. If you have questions about standing orders, you will see emails from us um, in the next three months. These all kind of come out from our vendors at different times. Um, and then we will we'll communicate that with you. And Scott has... Yes, so Scott is saying all previous standing orders cease until the new plans are set up as well. So you won't you won't most likely get any standing orders in January 21. That's correct, except for adult paperback plans. Usually those get those are the first ones to get set up. So if you get back to us about your adult paperback plans before we cut everything off in December, um, or before we close for Christmas break in December, then you will get your adult paperback plan in, in January. But usually the teen and juve series ones, they don't start until February or March. Good question, Scott. Okay, now here's what everybody has been waiting for. This is the big ticket item. Um, our year end timeline for this year for 2021. So our deadline to order this year falls in the same week. It's just a different number day. Um, so Thursday, de December 9th is our deadline to order for the 2021 fiscal year. On Friday, December 10th, we'll receive our last invoices from all of our vendors. After that, we will not be, re be receiving any new material. And then the plan um, is Friday, December 17th, is that's when we will do our rollover, where we will close 2021 and open 2022. Um, and then we will put new allotment money in your funds between December and January. I'm a little, I'm being a little vague, I have to be honest with you, with that deadline, because we, you may or may not know that um, our accounting technician, David, retired at the end of September. And so we have a new accounting technician, Daria. Um, she's absolutely lovely and she's just um, doing wonderful here at Yellowhead so far. I'm sure she'll continue to, um, but I'm not sure because this is our first year doing reconciliation together, her and I, when we'll be totally finished. So usually I don't add in those new allotment money, money until, um, until our reconciliation is finished. So I will, that's why I'm not quite committing to a date on that yet. Um, but I'm sure that they will be in before um, everybody gets back from uh, December break or, you know, before you will start ordering in, Jan in January. Um, the other date that is kind of tentative is the Friday, December 17th, the rollover. 
like I said, depending on how our reconciliation goes, it might go into that next week of the 21st or 22nd, but you do have from the 13th, which is the Monday until the 17th to run any reports that you need. So that week, um, if you need to run reports, that should be the week that you mark off on your calendar right now, put a big asterisk by, that is your week to run reports for the most accurate information because nothing will be changing on your accounts that week. So nothing will be changing in terms of um, orders being put in, nothing will be changing in terms of items being received. Now there may be some changes if you are asking for changes in terms of canceling items or canceling long back ordered, um, then there will be some changes, but obviously we would be in contact about that and I would let you know, okay, maybe don't run this report yet, let's make the changes, then we'll run it. Now, as a note, we did this last year and I think it worked pretty well, so we're going to try it again this year. You may create and submit orders in CCD and ULS carts after December 9th but we will not send in the orders to the vendors until um, the week of January 4th to 7th. So we will make sure that no CCD orders or lists expire at the end of December. I'll just put them usually until mid-January um, so that all those records and everything stay in there. And with ULS carts, um, you can submit those too. So we'll get them downloaded um, and you can submit all of that, but we will not be putting them through the, to the vendor until January. If you have any questions about that, let me know. So year-end reports. So last year we trialed, in this webinar last year, because um, it's the first time we've done this, I said, okay, you have to run all your reports between these two, these three days. I think it was like the Monday to the Wednesday after the, the cutoff. Um, this year I'm giving you a week, <laughs> so a little bit longer, but I am also letting everybody know that we are going to run a certain number of reports for all of you this year, and we will email them out as we did last year. So we trialed it last year to see how long it took us, if it improved, you know, some experiences for some libraries, and it, we thought that it really did. So we are going to do it again with some improvements at it. Um, so the reason why we're doing this is because once we roll over, it's extremely challenging to get some of the information from these reports once rollover has happened. Specifically, the last one in this list, the fund expenditure report, it's really hard to get this information once we roll over. Um, so because of that, we're going to just do these three reports for you. So this year, we're going to run a new version of the detail of the on order report. We're actually going to build it in simply reports and it's going to be more detailed and it's going to be new and include back ordered items. So it's not just going to tell you what's on order. It's going to tell you what's been back ordered, what might, well, nothing should be pending claim. So it should just be on ordered, back ordered. Then we're going to run you a canceled items report. So this is just a list. This won't give you a why these items were canceled, but if you have questions about anything like that, you can always email us and we can um, endeavor to find that information out from our vendors, or we might kind of have it on file. The reason that we don't put a why in when we cancel items is we don't really have a space to put it in. Um, that's really obvious and kind of valuable. So if you are wondering why, just let us know. Um, to let to give you a little bit more information, I am not canceling anything that the vendor is telling me will be published in 2022. I'm only marking it as back order. So if there are things that are back ordered, it could mean that it's being published into 2022 that the publishing date got moved forward and that could be a consequence of the supply chain delays but for cancelled items the reason that i'm marking them cancelled is that the vendor has said there's no publication date available so it's not even scheduled or it's been cancelled by the publisher so you may want to note those two things down um, but like i said you can email us if you have questions and the last report that we'll give to you is the fund expenditure report. 
And so what this report tells you is what you actually received in 2020. Now, just a little note about this report, about all of these reports, is that Polaris is not accounting software. So if you use accounting software on your end at your local libraries, or if you use, if you have your own local spreadsheets, I would recommend just kind of reconciling these reports with what you have in your spreadsheets or reports that you have with your own software, just to kind of make sure they line up. I mean, they might not be 100% like that. Of course, when we're talking about reconciling things, it would be lovely if everything was at 100%. But we know that, you know, sometimes one or two things can be off. And if you do find, you know, big discrepancies, then definitely um, contact me. Now, fund expenditure. Oh, Laura, good point. I forgot to change a date. Fund expenditure report will show what you actually received in 2021, not 2020. So yes, 2021. So what you received this, this past year. Um, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Darlene. Good catch. Um, the other note about the fund expenditure report that I wanted to mention, and I know I'm going on a little bit about these, is that there are some totals that get added up, but it doesn't necessarily reflect what is left in your um, fund because it's not taking into consideration on order items. So just make sure that when you're looking at these reports that you are logging into CCD to get the most accurate number for your balances, for your free balances or your encumbered balances which is what you still have on order. Um, but I will detail that in the email that I send in December with all of these reports. And you may receive these reports from myself, uh, Scott, Janet, uh, Sophia, Ashley, Carrie, Andrew. I might get a whole team to help us do these reports this year. Um, so just uh, keep an eye open. They'll probably say, you know, YRL year-end reports um, and make sure you, you save them once you get them. But if you don't, this is the other beauty of us running these, we will have them saved. So if you need them in January, you can always email us for them. Okay, I think that's it for that. Uh, getting close to the end here, and then it'll be Stephanie's turn. Uh, just a brief little overview of funds. And the reason that I'm doing this is because we actually we'll have to run separate reports for all of your funds for some of them. Um, so I just wanted to do just a little quick, you know, uh, funds 101. So you all have an allotment account. This includes all amounts from various boards or um, municipalities who um, allocate funds towards your library. So your allotment account, I think you're all familiar with that account is coded with just your library code. So that's your allotment account. Your additional allotment account, this is your account where if you send us in funds from your local collection budgets to spend through YRL, we create this fund. And it's simply your library code with a dash and an A. So additional allotment fund. Um, we do separate your allotment and your additional allotment into two funds for our own purposes so that we can keep track better. And we hope that it allows you to keep track better, um, keep track uh, you know, more accurately as well. And then the third fund that you may or may not use is the Build Direct Fund. And this fund is always your library code with a seven at the end. Um, and that's an accounting practice from way before I started at Yellowhead, why we named them like that. So I don't really know why, but it, it just is that. And we always invoice you for any purchases on those funds. So you will see um, when you get the reports that you may have multiple reports if you use multiple funds, because we will send you a report for each fund. Um, okay, just checking the questions, none. So now the fun part, some FAQs. Uh, these are some frequently asked questions that I've received over the years. Do I lose my allotment if anything is left unspent? No, we roll everything over. So we roll over account balances and on ordered or encumbered. And like I said, we double check to make sure that it's accurate. So before rollover and after rollover that it doesn't change. Um, what happens to your items still on order? They get rolled over and they're called encumbrances. Um, 
and they roll over into the new fiscal year. What if you want to make another overdrive contribution? We would prefer <laughs> if you do want to make another overdrive contribution this year, either through a check that you're sending in or from your allotment, that you let us know before December 10th and that any um, checks arrive by that Friday, December 10th. Um, always, it seems, you know, most years, last few years, uh, you know, there might be some, I don't know, delays in getting checks or whatnot, and sometimes they don't arrive until after December 10th. If you think you won't be able to meet that deadline because maybe people on your border are away or whatnot, just let me know that something is coming and that you want to make a contribution. Um, because if I know that I can look for it and make sure that I get it in before our um, before we cut off for, for 2021. Um, if you are a library who likes to make a contribution and then create your own carts in OverDrive or Cloud Library, then we ask that you do that by December 15th um, so that we can get those things ordered and reconcile everything um, before we roll over on the 17th. And how do you submit extra funds? You send them to us at Yellowhead. So whether you want to if you have you know, an extra 5,000 or 2,000 or 1,000 or 500 in your collections budgets and you need to spend those out by the end of the year, then a good way to do that is to send um, them as additional allotment. And then even if you, and then that way you don't have to spend it, you just give it to us, it rolls over into the next year and then you can spend it out um, into 22. And we must receive all checks by Friday, December 10th. Um, Carla has asked, will you accept EFT soon instead of checks? And that is a really good question that I don't know the answer to. I want to say. We're working on it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we are working on it. And I think that I don't know if we'll have that done for this year. Um, but I know that it's being worked on because EFT, that's one thing that Darian has been doing just a stellar job at is getting us onto EFT for a lot of our payments. And I think our check checks have gone down by like 70 or 80%. So um, we are working on it. And if you don't hear anything um, from me, then ask me again in November. Great question. Um, okay, another question we often get that's not necessarily acquisitions related, but that's really stats related is how does year to date, that's what YTD means, year to date work. So year to date switches in January every year. So right now, the when it when you're looking in simply reports and when you're looking in records and it says previous year to date, right now that's talking about 2020. So if you want to basically run any stats that are previous year to date sums or whatnot, make sure you do that. If you want to do it for 2020, do it before January, um, because as soon as it switches in January, the year to date will go or the previous year to date will then be 2021. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, just put your hand up or ask a question in the chat. Um, when will new allotment appear? Before January 1st. I, like I said, don't know exactly when, but before January 1st. And how is allotment calculated? You will receive a letter in January that outlines the funds that have been allocated to your library by boards or municipalities in your geographic area. So most of you will receive um, funds from your municipality. Um, but some of you also receive allocations from nearby summer villages, villages, or county library boards. And this year, um, I think I might even be changing that a little bit and outlining how much, because in the past we've just done a sum of how much has been allocated, but I think I might separate it out um, so that you can see exactly how much is coming from, um, from each allocation. If you have questions about that, feel free to let me know. But you will receive that um, to you as a library manager. So your library managers will be receiving that in January. Okay, 
that is it for me. I think I've talked for definitely my full half an hour and I will throw it over to Stephanie to talk about technology services. Thanks, Josie. Um, so technology services and your end stuff is um, definitely less involved than Josie's, so I won't take as much time. Um, and if I have a weird echo, uh, I do apologize. So um, hopefully that's not too distracting. Anyway, just like um, Josie in collections and resource sharing has supplier delay issues, um, so too do we have in the technology side. So I'm sure you have all uh, been warned about the supply chain issues with your Christmas presents. So similarly, um, anything kind of technology-based is, is, is experiencing supply chain issues. Not to mention that there is a worldwide chipset shortage. Um, so COVID uh, kind of closed off those production facilities and then there was trade wars and droughts and fires. And this is all kind of snowballed into uh, a chip set, <laughs> chip set shortage. So those semiconductors that are in um, electronics um, worldwide, and it's they're saying that it's going to take about one to two years to recover from this shortage. Um, so what does that mean? Yeah, well, it means that you, anything that you're ordering from us um, in technology services, whether it be you know it's primarily printers, um, not printers, computers, laptops. Um, those are the main ones. Um, anything that you order in 2021 may not arrive in 2021. Um, and similarly with the supply chain issues, it's we're seeing, you know, some things are coming in really quick if stock is available uh, and some things are taking a little bit longer. So what you'll need to consider when you're ordering, um, you know, when you've got some money and you're, or you want to order some, some computers or, or keyboards or barcodes or scanners or whatever, um, you'll need to consider what fiscal year you'll need to be invoiced in. Because if you need something, if you're going to come to us and say, I need to order this computer and I need it by the end of the year, we can't necessarily guarantee that. So you may have, if you have the 2020 money in your 2021 budget, you may have to put that in, have that roll over into your 2022 budget because the end may not come until that time. Um, oh, so next slide, you'll see. Thank you. Uh, so with that said, we're recommending that um, it's not a deadline. It's not a hard deadline by all means, but if you're looking to get stuff and you're, you're hoping to get it, you know, by the end of the year, maybe <laughs> you want to order by the end of this month. So by November 1st, um, it is just our recommendation. If you don't care when it comes, um, you have until the end of the year. Uh, that's fine until we close for business. But, um, Right now, we're just kind of playing with that, with that as, a, as our ordering deadline. Um, I know a lot of you sometimes look at your, a lot of libraries have at the end of the year, they've got some extra money, so they want to go, okay, we'll buy some technology. Um, just keep in mind that you may not be invoiced until 2022 on that. Um, and speaking of invoicing, we're actually changing our uh, processes a little bit. And just going to streamline the processes actually with the with collections and resource sharing, kind of with how you order books. And now the invoice will come with the item. So when you say you order a computer from us, it will come here as per usual. It will get provisioned. We will wait for the invoice from the vendor, and then we will generate an invoice for the library and then the material. And only until we have that invoice for you, then we'll send that out to the library. So. Um, we're tracking the times, so hopefully there's not too much of a delay in between that voicing piece, but this will, um, you won't be kind of hounding uh, anybody for, hey, where's that invoice? Where's that invoice? I know that this has happened in the, in the past for some, but there's been a bit of a delay. So that's what we're doing. Um, you will have a, an envelope on, that will say invoice enclosed. It will be on your um, Thanks, Josie. You'll, it'll be on the actual box itself, whether it gets delivered on the van run, it might be in the bin with the item, or, or if um, Rob or Rem are delivering it in person, that invoice will be there with it. So now, as I said, I don't have too much. This is my last slide. Um, so with reports for from technology services, like as 
per every year, we will send you your annual report, um, Polaris report. So this is what helps you fill out your annual report for the PLSB. We will send that out in the first tip. It'll be the first business day back at YRL. So you don't have to run this report at all. Um, it's very important. You know, when we run it, we're running it exactly at, um, on January 1st, so on the holiday. And um, so the numbers are as accurate as possible for a full year. Uh, if you are running the report um, in January yourself, it can take a little bit longer because people are, um, a lot of people are running reports at that time. So it can drag, your counts won't be completely up to date um, because counts are always like a real time figure. And, um, but yeah, so we'll send that out. So you don't have to worry about that. Takes that piece off your plate and uh, I encourage you to rewatch the decoding the annual report webinar. It's still applicable, the same information. If you're wondering what in that report is, um, what, what it all means. And then, so Carla, do we have to run the in-house reports on December 31st? Yes, you will. So any, so kind of throwing back to what Josie said on that year to date, you definitely want to run um, in-house reports. Uh, so if you collect in-house statistics, you'll want to run those so that you can get those that, um, that current year. There's also, um, you'll may, you may want to, if some libraries like to run the um, current year to date, you saved amount. It's a it's a report you can build in Simply Reports if you were interested. Um, we have a library that runs it so that they can see um, the year of their libraries. You know how much value the uh, patrons have have taken out essentially. So that you'll want to be December thirty first because if you run that um, like a week later, those numbers are going to tell you what you want to hear to see. Uh, and then lastly, we will send you. Um, we'll send you the link to the annual usage statistics. So that's, you know, every year we, that will help you with your, um, again, the annual report for the PLSB, which will include your digital circulation, um, your website visits. The one we are incurring, uh, encountering some challenges right now is with the Wi-Fi statistics, um, getting that usage because in about mid-year, our the platform that the reporting platform that we that was previously um, from the from the software solution that we have for the Wi-Fi devices essentially um, changed, and so they kind of upgraded it, making it more user friendly. But you're not as able, you're not able to get the like really detailed reports anymore. So previously, I was able to get like a, it was a huge data dump, and we had to do some data manipulation. But that's how we got you your figures on you know, how many people were accessing the Wi-Fi points per month. And we're not able to do that in this new platform. So we're trying to find some workarounds and we're still working on that. So hopefully we'll be able to have something for you, um, but uh, I'll, we'll keep you posted on that. But that, uh, it will be a link. Now we'll, we will send out in, with, with everything you'll, you'll get from us. So those are the two reports that we will be sending to you. And, that's it. that's it from technology services, unless there were any more questions. Sorry, Steph, I wasn't the best uh, slide mover and shaker there. Um, that's okay. You were trying to be proactive. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I was trying to really listen. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, I don't know if anybody wants me to unmute them uh, so that you can ask a question. But we've got lots of time. We've got like a good 20 minutes. So I mean, um, if you have questions, I can definitely unmute you. Just throw in the chat and, and I can do that. Um, thank you all so much for attending today. We hope that this helped you. Um, I will be sending out a follow-up email um, probably tomorrow with the dates and deadlines in it to all of the our public library staff list. So that includes all of our public library managers and some staff as well in our public library. So you'll all be receiving that um, if you're on that list. And I'm sure that we will put some reminders in our newsletter, um, you know, as we get closer to the deadlines. Um, 
but you know, not a lot of change in these deadlines this year. I mean, it's always usually kind of that second week of December. Um, that's pretty typical for us. So just the, really the change in the reports that we're sending you those reports, you of course can still run anything else that you need. Um, and then we're going to include backordered items too. So that's a, that's a change for us. So I'm just kind of talking to fill the space um, to see if anybody has any more questions. <laughs> Uh, I don't see any more questions. So I think we'll then uh, call it, call it then oh, a pretty quick 40 minute webinar. Um, okay, so Carla is off. So thanks very much everybody for attending. Uh, this will be recorded and shared. So if there was somebody from your library who would like to watch it, check out our YouTube page probably next week it'll be posted on there and thank you again so much everyone for spending some time with us this afternoon so have a great day talk to you soon bye